Welcome to Tim's Final Confessions. I'm Tim Durling. My good friend Matt Phillips hey here, sitting in once again in Matt's studio. And we're here today to talk about Led Zeppelin. Uh, if you haven't seen from our little uh, tableau we've got in the back here, and some of Matt's Led Zeppelin books and a couple other things that are Zepp related. Um, we're uh, doing this just to go over, uh, I was, uh, earlier this year I finally got all of the Led Zeppelin, the original Led Zeppelin albums. Mm -hmm. I thought it was about time we did a TVC one because I hadn't done one. They're like the one of the last major bands that I've got their vinyl collection more or less intact that I haven't done a vinyl episode on. And I know there's been a ton of Led Zeppelin episodes and I'm not, uh, you know, die hard, all out Led Zeppelin fan. I like them a lot. But I, I thought for like diehard fans, it would be interesting to see which. Different kind I, of pressings. And yeah, stuff. whether I've got anything truly valuable. I strongly doubt that I do. I will start out by saying, I guess uh, neither of us have any of the 2014 reissue series. Reissues. From someone that's got most of the catalog already, I really don't. I really don't see the value in picking them up. If you're just starting out, yeah, get them. I haven't been able to pull the trigger. It's a little bit of sticker shock too, on yeah. some of them. It's pretty. Pretty expensive for some of the box sets, especially when you get into physical graffiti, oh, which for sure. even as a double album already. But, uh, you know, not deterring anyone from buying them, but I'm just saying that none of the ones that you'll see here today are like that. So we'll get started on this Led Zeppelin edition of Tim's Vinyl Confessions. So we'll get started with the, the first Led Zeppelin album from 1969. This is um, a Canadian pressing. I don't know how old it is. Someone wrote the name or wrote, there's, a, there's a D up on here. Oh, okay. So uh, you can see down here that says uh, this stereo album may be played on mono equipment for full sound reproduction use stereophonic needle. That's something that uh, are, is not a lot of albums of mine. I don't have a lot of albums from the 60s so it's kind of a real um, marker in time for this. Uh, side of it's a little beat up but not too bad. Uh, you can see there it says Led Zeppelin. A little bit of wear in the middle there. It's um, a pretty decent condition though. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, and here's the back cover, very young photo of the band. <laughs> down here in the bottom, uh, it's um, you can see it. It's uh, well, I don't even you see on camera or not. It's printed in Canada, so this is a Canadian issue of the first one. And uh, it was to the label. You'll see it's really, really old. So I don't think it's a reissue. If it was, it was a reissue, it would look way different. Very interesting looking sleeve. I don't know if this is the original sleeve or not. I'll take the record out because I know we're getting glare off the plastic. I don't know if this came with all the Atlantic albums at the time. Um, like I said, I don't think this wow, is a reissue. Great. Vinyl's in really good shape. I don't know if you can see the song titles from there. Uh, red label. The Atlantic logo's on there. And yeah, the vinyl, really, really good shape. And uh, the reason I don't think this is a reissue is because I think if it were, it would have the red and green oh, Atlantic logo nice. on it. So this, uh, and here's another thing, which is really strange. Uh, this probably is only for the Canadian issue. It says Atlantic and design is a registered trademark of Atlantic Recording Corporation. Quality Records Limited, a registered user. Quality Records of Canada, hmm. distributed Atlantic, not we in music, Warner music cool. didn't exist at the time, so that's probably close to an original within the awesome. first couple of years, I would say. Someone can feel free to correct me on that. Now, Matt, yes, you've sir. got the second one. We'll show your copy of it. So, in keeping with the um, one, two theme. Yeah, the second album, very, very cl iconic album. This is a Canadian issue, obviously. You can see the maple leaf up in the corner, all the WEA. So, this is a newer one, obviously. Distributed by Wea Music of Canada. I love the inner sleeve of this. It's very cool. Sorry, Tim. Yeah. Hey there. Open a gatefold. So, yeah. I always really like the um, the artwork on the second album. And uh, paper sleeve. Not much for a sleeve here. Might have been more to it originally. I'm learning that over the years. Got a little bit of bubbling going on in the label. So, like I said before, that's the red and green. And upside down. Got the red and green Atlantic logo, which tells yeah. me it's probably a reissue. See a little bit of bubbling there. Um, I don't know. Uh, mine looks about the same. I, I don't think I'll bother going into holding it up, although I will take a look to see if there's anything different on the sleeve. Oh, your and, um, label's a little lighter. And I, it's probably the same pressing. No, it's not the same pressing. It's not the same pressing at all. Uh, Matt, I get you to hold up the vinyl sure. again. This is something for the fact collectors out there. It's something we're just learning here. Uh, 
Serial number on this is KSD19127, which I think if the original CD, if you have that, that's the label on it. On this, it is SD8236, and there's a little C underneath of this for some reason. Um, and like, yeah, like Matt said, this is, I don't know if it's because it's the original color or if it's because it's faded a little bit. So already we're seeing some differences mm. in pressing. So that's pretty cool. Uh, next up, a Led Zeppelin III. Unique uh, packaging on this one, to say the least. I'll hold it up first. And this one's actually kind of functional because, let's see if I get this correctly, <laughs> you can, uh, there's like a kaleidoscope. Okay, there's nice. John Bonham. Um, is that Robert Plant? Or, uh, I don't know what the idea. That's uh, John Paul Jones. Okay, so there's another picture of John Paul Jones there. Mm. I see what's going on here. And, of course, Jimmy, Jimmy Page. Page. So, yeah, I'm sure no one ever got stoned and stared at this for hours and hours. Um, my copy, this has a sticker on the front of it, SD7201, and this was manufactured and distributed by Wea Music of Canada. So I don't know how old this one is. Not in bad shape on the side, actually. And the back cover. So, this one, uh, like the second one, is a gatefold. Kind of has to be. And this kind of shows all the bits that are in it. There's a lot to take in, and there's, there's credits sort of interspersed along here, too. And there are the song titles. Of course, the Zeppelin itself is there. I think, seem to recall that um, Jimmy Page is on a record saying he didn't like didn't the way this the artwork <laughs> came out at all. Uh, just a plain plastic sleeve on my copy. And this is again another Canadian issue with the red green Atlantic logo, which to me marks it as a reissue. So that's Led Zeppelin 3. Um, Matt's got Led Zeppelin 4, as, as do I. I'll show you his first. Very, very iconic album cover. Um, Incidentally, I was listening to an interview with Neil Peart from Rush, and it, he was talking about this front cover. That's, uh, the, the sticks that, that the man is collecting is actually gorse wood. Gorse. I guess gorse is a very uh, greasy type of wood, starts fires easy. I call it Led Zeppelin IV. Some people call it Zoso. Some people call it Runes. Some people call it just Led Zeppelin, Untitled. I call it Led Zeppelin IV. There's nothing identifying the title on here. Um, very interesting font used. The reason it's called Zoso is because of this symbol right here. Uh, each of these signs was picked by the band member to represent something or other. Um, There's the lyrics to Stairway to Heaven. Yeah, that's the first time I think any of the lyrics have appeared. I don't know how common that was back then for lyrics I don't to think appear. Very common. They actually, I was just reading about this this morning. They had that font commissioned just for this. So that's, that's a Led Zeppelin font. That was not an existing font. Let's see what the rest of it looks like. Okay. It's got the actual symbols right on the... I haven't looked at mine in a long time, so I'm curious just to see what mine actually looks like. And for some reason it goes sideways, the label. It's a very Led Zeppelin thing to do, it seems like. <laughs> so look at Tim. So most people, if you have one Led Zeppelin album, it's probably this one. So yeah. Uh, it's interesting there's nothing written on the side at all. Now mine is different from Matt's. Very, very small print. I'll hold it way, way up here. Manufactured by Columbia House under license, which I'm sure there's some collectors that would totally just, that's terrible. <laughs> Why would you desecrate it like that? Uh, same hermit artwork. Oh, that's in mine, or that's in Matt's. And I'll see what the um, main thing is to see what the record looks like. So it's got the same, same sleeve that Matt just showed you. And uh, kind of the same. Um, actually, it almost looks to me like this record is different than the, uh, the sleeve because there's nothing about Columbia House written on here. It's a little bit different writing, I believe, than Matt's. A little bit smaller font they use. So mm -hmm. this, this one, probably more than any other Led Zeppelin record, was reissued and reissued again. It, it was their biggest single selling album. And it's the only one that I have on 8-track. Oh, Pretty nice. beaten up. Um, this is a Canadian... I just found this at a trading post. This is a Canadian issue, so it's just got the symbols there. And the song titles, the songs are totally out of order. If you, For your fact collectors, it's Black Dog, Battle of Evermore on Program 1. Program 2 is going to California when the levee breaks, so 
The last song on the album, as most people understand it, is actually halfway through. Program three is Misty Mountain Hop, Four Sticks, Rock and Roll, Begin. And program four is Rock and Roll Conclusion and Stairway to Heaven. So that's my one Led Zeppelin nice. A-track. Classic enough. Uh, next up, 1973. It was going to be called Led Zeppelin Five, And it's Houses of the Holy. i got to tell you, I really don't like this album cover. I don't know what they were thinking. It's... It's kind of creepy. I don't think there's anything <laughs> written on the side here. Uh, this is a Canadian issue, as can easily be seen by the Maple Leaf up here. This was a, a Hypnosis album cover. The inner sleeve, I, I would have preferred to see on the front cover. It's kind of some very sort of Tolkien-esque about this yeah, picture, sure. but I think that's probably, it might have been by design. Mm -hmm. So this one has an actual lyric sleeve inside of it, and Lyrics to all the songs. Now, I like this font here. I don't know. that They probably had that one specially made, too. But this has the lyrics to all the songs. Pretty minimal. There's not a lot of thank yous. Led Zeppelin sort of always had a mystique about them. Not a lot of thank yous or anything like that. This looks like um, getting to more of an original issue, but the fact that it's got the maple leaf on the back of it tells me it probably came out sometime in the early 80s. But again, the red and green Atlantic sleeve. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to show you is the, the album I just got not too long ago, a couple months ago. Physical Graffiti. This came out in 1975. This was uh, one that eluded me for a while. Finally found a decent copy of it. Uh, That's a good shape. They don't like putting things on the sides here. And there's a lot going on on this album cover. This is a Canadian issue. Because uh, depending on... It's die cut. So... Depending on how you change this and where you place it back in, it, mm. you could have all kinds of... I think there's one of these scenes that has John Bonham and tights, so we don't really need to <laughs> see that. Um, and uh, Even without anything in there, it still says physical graffiti in the windows. So we'll look at what the actual... So far I haven't seen any credits of any sort. I don't know if it was a, a sleeve uh, or a single sleeve that came with this it. This is their first um, double album. Yeah. This is also the first one on Swan Song, which is their own imprint that was distributed by Atlantic Records. Try to hold that one. There's not as so much of a glare. There, that's better. That famous uh, Swan Song logo. Is that supposed to be Icarus, I assume? Yeah, I, I think so. I remember when I was a kid, I used to see shirts with that. And What is that? <laughs> Led Zeppelin? It. <laughs> uh, actually, I showed you the second record before the first one. But, yeah, from here on in, the Led Zeppelin album will all be on the Swan Song logo. A few other bands uh, were on Swan Song as well. The only other one that I have anything by would be Bad Company, uh, also managed by Peter Grant. Okay, so now is um, the famous Led Zeppelin movie. The song know. remains the same. I didn't know you had the song by all. Um, yeah, I, this, this one's got some neat stuff in it. I haven't looked at it in a long time. This is actually the first American issue of this that I've got. So, kind of a minimal looking album cover. That's supposed to be an actual film studio. Um, I can't remember where. I used to know. And um, this is one of those double live albums from the 70s that only has a few songs on it. Tended to stretch them out a little bit in concert. Mm -hmm. A little, uh, little indulgent. So, when you open this up, this is kind of different. There's a little write-up here uh, from Cameron Crowe oh. talking about Led Zeppelin on tour. This came out in 1976, but the, the tour was actually recorded in 1973. Madison Square Garden, I think, is where most of the footage came from. And there's a, a booklet here. Kind of hard to show you, but yeah, it's just different pictures. Some of these are scenes from like, the movie, which we will talk about. Now I'll show you what the vinyl looks like. Mine just have plain... Um, paper sleeves, although oh, this is an official one because <laughs> Atlantic, Atco, Cotillion, and Custom Labels, those must have all been divisions of Atlantic Records. And again, we're talking about Swan Song. Very small, very small printing for the song titles themselves. As you can see here, Super this clean. has, this entire side of this, uh, of this record is dazed and confused. <laughs> That's it, and probably half of that is Jimmy Page on the vault. And uh, just to dig this one out too, this would be the other record. Well, to give you another example, this 
one this one side here has two songs, no quarter, I stairway to heaven. That's it. <laughs> so not something that crosses. Uh, I think they've done better live albums than the song remains the same. But while we're talking about the song remains the same, of course this was uh, for years and years and years. This was the only Led Zeppelin video footage available. It's the only thing. Here's the DVD version, one of probably the one of the many put up by Warner, and um, I think there are a few different songs on here than are that actually made the the record. Um, double disc, double disc set. And Matt's got the Blu-ray edition, looks much the same as the DVD. There's a few things on here that weren't on the DVD version. Extras for the first time, two never before released performances. Is this on your DVD? The Celebration Day and Over the Hills and Far Away. Plus Misty Mountain Hop and the Ocean. Yeah. Okay, you do have that. Yeah. You must have one of the newer DVDs then. Yeah, at one time I had this on VHS. I don't have it anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. your... Ah. HMV. Little plug for HMV. And the other cool thing about Led Zeppelin records is that the more you look at them, the more you see. Because you've got Led Zeppelin Presence. I don't know if you could see that or not. Try to catch it in the in light. Maybe about print. there. It's in raised print. And on the back, oh. you've got a Swan Song label logo. Uh, very subtle. Very subtle there. Again, one of the reasons I like vinyl so much. Uh, this is uh, another Swan Song logo, with songs on it. And again, this is a U.S. pressing of presents. Next up is my personal favorite Led Zeppelin album. Always has been, always will be since I got into them in, uh, say, 92. Probably their least critically acclaimed. I really like it. Um, you know, Matt's copy first because he's got the cooler copy. In for the Outdoor. This album was actually sold in a brown paper bag. Now, Alice Cooper did something similar to this with the Muscle of Love. It came in a cardboard box, but this actually came in a cardboard bag. <laughs> Matt's copy has a sticker on the bottom here indicating that this is a Canadian issue. So, We in Music of Canada with the, the number there. So, they did a lot of cool things. Um, I think it was Hypnosis once again did this album art. So, take a good look at this. Um... I think that there were six different cover arts made for this, all from the same barroom scene. And as you can see, just the two that he and I have, mine's different, but we'll, we'll look at his first. And here's the inner sleeve. So the thing about this, um, if you put a drop, little drops of water on top of it, it would color. I'm not yeah, sure that's that where the red. Small, yeah, this is where the red and green, so whoever owned this record originally, obviously, I tried, tried that. Or tried it out. Yeah, and it works. Great. And so someone did that on his the front cover too. You can see where there's some of that the color. Here's the same label that we've been seeing. Yeah, Swan Song, which uh, down at the bottom, William Music of Canada. And for the outdoor, I I I just I don't know. I like this record a lot. It's uh, something about having the synthesizer on it makes it sound a little I don't know a little bit different. I mean, some of the old Led Zeppelin stuff, great as it was. It does kind of sound a little bit dated. This one could have come out two or three years after it did. Like, yeah. Uh, and it's in, I, I always wonder, what would another Led Zeppelin album have sounded like? And it's easy to identify the songs with this record, like you said, with the synthesizer. You wouldn't, really, you know, a song from Led Zeppelin 4, you know, just hearing it quick, you might think it was from Houses of the Holy or Presence. A uh, song from the, either the first two, kind of interchangeable. This, uh, the Led Zeppelin in Through the Outdoor and Led Zeppelin 3 are probably two of the most unique ones. Led Zeppelin 3 is mostly acoustic, has a very unique sound the way it was recorded, and this one does too. Let's show them the differences in the cover. Yeah, this is my version of In Through the Outdoor. Start with the front cover. So yeah, same, same scene, different perspective. Uh, all the characters in here, this is where they're seeing it from, supposedly. And I believe, I could be wrong about this, I think there were six different cover arts done up for this. And back covers are different too. I'm assuming the same perspective. So, uh, I don't, yeah, there's something right on the side here. My, this is an American, uh, Matt's is Canadian, mine's an American issue. Same sleeve inside of it, no one tried, whoever had this album did not try the water test. <laughs> and other than the, well now this is interesting. This is not American. It's Canadian. I should look at these things before I film. We Music of Canada. There you go. So that's in for the outdoor. And the last bit of Led Zeppelin vinyl, but not the last thing we're going to show you. Um, of course, John Bonham died in 1980. 
but they owed uh, their swan song Atlantic contract called for one more album. So in 1982, we got Coda, the only Led Zeppelin album released in the 1980s. And uh, this came out again on Swan Song Atlantic. This is a Canadian issue. Eight songs, uh, all of which were um, dating all the way back to the second album. We're Gonna Groove is a, uh, I always get it mixed up with it's Benny King or B.B. King. Mm -hmm. I guess B.B. King. Mm -hmm. No, it's Benny King. I don't know. <laughs> Look it up. It's one of the Kings. Yeah, this, uh, this was recorded for Led Zeppelin 2. Poor Tom, I think, was recorded for Led Zeppelin 3. A lot of these came from the In for the Outdoor session, so they kind of have that overall sound. And uh, the crop circles, more about that later. Nice copy. Yeah, the copy's in good shape. Nice hard cardboard stock. Uh, nice collage of pictures of the group from various points in their career. Not, a, not much for credits. And again, nice hard cardboard stock for the, the sleeve itself. And a little bit of information about when these were recorded. And the album itself with the Swan Song logo. So for years, that was the end of Led Zeppelin's recording career. And I mean, they never recorded another album, but there have been a lot of releases. Um, and Matt's got, I think, the first to come out. Um, so from 1982 to 1990 there were no Led Zeppelin releases uh, other than bootlegs and there was never been there had never been a best of or compilation of any sort until 1990 when this uh, untitled four uh, disc set came out. It came out on record CD and cassette and this is a big big chunk of Led Zeppelin's material. Uh, mm. Very very cool packaging. I don't actually own this one I own a uh, version of it, as you'll see. Huge booklet, almost a record-sized booklet with it. Yeah. So we'll hold this up with that. So that's the front cover, back cover, and um, lots of information about um, the, look at this the songs. Um, lots of pictures, and uh, on this there were. Um, a couple of uh, a couple of things that didn't appear anywhere else. Well, that were hard to find. A song called "Hey Hey, What Can I Do." A lot of you know that song. Love that song. It was the B side of um, "Immigrant Song," and it never appeared on a Led Zeppelin album proper until now. And also, um, Jimmy Page took two um, the two drum solo sort of uh, John Bonham instrumentals, "Moby Dick" and Bonzo's Montro and combine them into one one uh, long piece mixed together, which is kind of cool. So this is what the individual discs look like. Interesting track selection on them, and uh, Jimmy Page did a lot of tweaking to get the sound uh, up to speed, up to his standards. Atlantic put the original Led Zeppelin CDs out in the early to mid-1980s without his consent. He was not happy with the way they turned out. And this for a box set, which was pretty expensive, it sold really, really well, which Kind of, um, it's been said that that's sort of a, one of Peter Grant's long-term management strategies is not to have a thousand best of compilations. So that when they finally did one, people were waiting for it and would snatch mm -hmm. it up. They go to show one of the CDs too. And then we'll kind of yeah, the CDs have a kind of a stylized, just it's very simple but very, fancy very good. It's a very cool looking font and just plain sort of whitish silver mm -hmm. on black. So this was actually, I, I still don't own all of the Led Zeppelin CDs. So... I got used to the, the running order of these songs. So like hearing certain. So now songs when you hear them in their proper, yeah, yeah that happens sometimes. And to follow that up. Yeah, about three years later, this is the second part two of the box set. This kind of collects all the songs that, I think it's all the songs from the Zeppelin albums, studio songs that didn't make an album. Plus, there's a, a previously unreleased song called "Baby Come On Home." which is a slow blues. I think it was recorded around the same time as their first album. That's a little booklet. Yeah, I don't, I don't own either of these box sets. So this has some different uh, pictures, uh, different write-up. So this came out in uh, late 93. And then missed a couple of CDs. Yeah. Cool, uh, cool look for those discs. There. And again, these are all the, the, the order of these songs are all sort of jumbled up to, mm -hmm. for maximum effect. The inside. And around the same time, um, 
following the success of the, the original box set, uh, the first time I think I heard about this was one of those as seen on TV advertisements, mm -hmm. which is odd for a band like Led Zeppelin. But this Slim Remasters came out, and it's got the same cover, just with different color treatments to it. This came out, it's got a date of 1992 on it, on Atlantic. Okay. This came from Columbia House, a smooth uh, booklet here. And so it's three discs instead of four. Yeah, it's three discs, it's sort of, so it's, uh, it's compressed. So this booklet has the same cover as the, the entire box mm -hmm. set. And uh, first time some that. of the same pictures as you can see. Those are the pictures that ended up on the covers of each of the four CDs in the box set. And this other booklet, Led Zeppelin Profiled. This is a series of interviews with Jimmy Page, Robert Plant, and John Paul Jones. These are set up in such a way that if you wanted to sound like you were interviewing Led Zeppelin, you could. And this is what each of the discs look like. The interview disc is actually quite entertaining, particularly John Paul Jones uh, talking about using a Mellotron on stage and how unreliable it was. So this is a good primer for, Ze for Led Zeppelin. And um, so, but there's, I mean, there's, there's other ones that have come out since then, but. I particularly, I like this, this remaster set here. Um, the next thing we're going to show you came out in um, 1997. And it's a show, or a couple of shows, that had been heavily bootlegged. And finally, they, they cleaned them up and put them out. Yeah. Led Zeppelin, BBC Sessions. This was put out by Atlantic, uh, of course, in association with Jimmy Page. This has two sets. I think one was recorded in 69, one was recorded in 71. This contains a couple of songs that, um, three songs actually, that weren't on any Led Zeppelin albums. Uh, it's got Traveling Riverside Blues, which is on the box set, the Robert Johnson tune. They actually made a video for that at the time that the mm -hmm. box set came out. Uh, Eddie Cochran's song called Something Else, and a song on here called The Girl I Love, She Got Long Black Wavy Hair. Now, this is a song that never made an album, but the riff kind of did, because the riff is basically what became Moby Dick. Oh, they just recorded okay. it without lyrics. And it's got some some credits, pictures. It's actually a bit of a write-up mm -hmm. this time. And uh, yeah, at, at a certain time in the 90s, any band that recorded sessions for the BBC, it's like they all remembered that they had done that, uh, got permission to use them, and, and, and sold some albums on it. So it's a two CD set, BBC sessions. And I think, the, I think I don't. That's the it for my stuff. Uh, Matt's got some other stuff. In 2003, we got some long, long-awaited uh, Led Zeppelin stuff. Oh, okay, uh, just the Led Zeppelin DVD. Yeah, untitled again. And again, like I said, for years and years, the song remains the same. Was the only officially released video you could get of Led Zeppelin. This changed that. This has some incredible footage from pretty much spanning their career. Mm -hmm. So. This is from, this goes from, uh, you know, 1970, I think there's some early footage on here, all the way up to 79, 80, when they're doing the In Through the Outdoor shows, yeah. which is, of course, their final tour. Uh, at the same time that this came out, an actual live album was released called How the West Was Won. And I think that was made up of songs from this, this performance here. So that's actually for Led Zeppelin Live. I would say, and a purist would probably hate me for saying this, I wouldn't start with the song remains the same. I'd start, start with here. this, if, you know, now that you have the opportunity to do so. Because song remains the same, even though they're good songs, um, I don't know, it just doesn't... Much music used to rerun it all the time, and, and, and before I was a fan, I'd watch bits of it and think, why does this band, why, why does everybody love this band? It's just boring and long and stretched out. Yeah, the issue, of course, is that a lot of it was redone in the studio, the yeah. footage. So. Also, it was recorded at the end of the tour, so it's just not, I don't think it's good representation of Led Zeppelin concert. Another place that would bring it right up to the present, um, in 2007, Led Zeppelin recorded, or well, did what a lot of people thought that they would never do, a, a reunion, reunion show. As far as you could get it. Anyway. Yeah, uh, with Jason Bonham, of course, John Bonham's son on on drums. Five years after that it was released, and I have this too, but it's identical. Celebration Day. This came out in 2012. Uh, Matt's actually got the Blu-ray version, I've got the DVD version. This, Tell them what this was all about. Yeah, this was um, the reason that it, it took something big for Led Zeppelin to do a reunion show, and they did do one show at the O2 in London, 
and it was because of Ahmet Erdogan, who was uh, the president of Atlantic Records, and he was very influential in the music industry. And of course, Atlantic Records was Led Zeppelin's label, so they did it for him. Uh, Robert Plant even says, we did it, Ahmet. So <laughs> they weren't going to do one. They were. So this is cool because, I mean, it's, it's listing Jason Bonham as a band member, which I'm sure is a huge honor for him to take in his uh, father's footsteps. It's a really good show. I mean, um, I like the set list. I love the fact that they do one song that they've never done live ever before. It's the song from Presence. Uh, is it Hot Song for Nowhere? No, For Your Life. And they've never recorded that, or they've never done that song live before. The Presence tour famously was cut short because of a tragedy. Robert Plant's son died. Suddenly the tour was ended. That's one of the reasons Presence was not their biggest seller. They didn't do a complete tour for it. But yeah, they do For Your Life on here. It's a good mixture. It starts off with Good Times, Bad Times, the very first song on the very first album. They hit the high points that you'd expect, and they mm -hmm. look like they're having a lot of fun on stage, and it sounds good. Like Robert Plant, yeah, okay, his vocal range isn't what he used to be, but I like what he does with it's these very songs. very energetic. Yeah. Uh, the only weird thing I always thought was, I mean, it was recorded in 2007. It didn't come out until 2012. Yeah, of course, so. that gave it lots of time to be heavily bootlegged, but people mm -hmm. still bought this up when it finally came out. Yeah. It's also, I've seen a deluxe vinyl box set, but like a lot of the newer Zeppelin things, it's just out of my price range. It's just, you know, 100 bucks or more for four, probably four records and whatever. But um, you could pick this up, CD, DVD, or Blu-ray set, and it's it's not, a, I wouldn't call it an introduction to Led Zeppelin, but it's really cool that they did that one more, a, a latter-day show, and made it available. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a look at sort of our Zeppelin collections. Um, hope you enjoyed the show. And I know that there's a lot of other Zepp collectors out there. They'll have singles there, although there weren't a lot of Led Zeppelin singles, but just a lot of different variations on the vinyl. And of course, a lot of you probably have the 2014 issues, which is cool. That this is what we have. So once again, thanks for watching this edition of Tim's Vinyl Confessions.